And this way, it'll look more like water. You know, I want this to not look like sky. I want it to be a flat surface. Please welcome Jane McCraw Tubner. Jane, uh, I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you, Eric. I'm very glad to be here too. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get uh, get this thing rolling in a minute. But first, what are we going to do? I'm going to um, do a pastel demonstration of landscape, and of I'll be landscape. using. Um, it'll be about color harmony. When pastel artists, when especially when you first start. There are right. thousands of pastels to choose from. So I'm going to work with a limited palette. And I use this sometimes, the analogous color wheel. Yeah. This is a great uh, thing. It's uh, how we... In front of you so we can see it. Okay. Right there. Can you see yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. And this um, gives me an idea of the limited colors that I should use so that I wind up using every color in my pastel box. When oh. oil painters paint, they usually have a limited amount of uh, tubes of paint. But pastel artists, they arrive on location or they in their studio, we have thousands of colors. Right. So you don't want to put thousands of colors in your painting. Right. So I've made a little color chart and I've isolated the pastels that I'm using. So I will just work on this analogous color landscape. Oh, cool. Well, we're looking forward to that. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll let you get your camera reset and I'll uh, hop off, make a couple of quick announcements. So Jane, it looks like you've kind of laid in something. You want to tell us about what's going on here? Yes, I've done an underpainting here. Um, this is a scene from the Adirondacks, which um, is not that far from my house. It's about four hours. One of these days, I'd like to go to your plein air event up there, Eric. Um, but this is from the Adirondacks, and I've laid it in doing an underpainting using um, alcohol and pastel. So this way, I have the pure pigment. It is 100% pastel painting. And what I have done on the side here is I've laid out my colors beforehand using the analogous color wheel where I've picked my main colors up here. And then these are the discords. Then I've added some neutrals down here, which really, I feel the neutrals hold the painting together. And now, why do you so use alcohol? I use alcohol, 90% uh, alcohol as a um, wash. Just rubbing alcohol? Very quickly. Rubbing alcohol right from the drugstore. Ah, okay. So and uh, what, what are you painting on? What's the surface? This is a new paper called Lux Archival, and it's a sanded surface. So it takes a lot of it takes a lot of abuse. It takes a lot of layers, and it's uh, fairly new. I think it's just been out less than a year, and I've fallen in love with it. I really like it. And where in the Adirondacks did you go? This is Chestertown, which is not far from Lake George. A little right. bit inland. It's by Friends Lake and Loon Lake. All right. Yeah, I know there. just where it is. I have a, a home in the Adirondacks and we spend summers there. We have a big event in uh, June, which is our 10th yes. annual Adirondack event. So, okay, I'm going to let you go ahead and get started. Okay. I will jump in from questions from time to time from the people in the comments and maybe tell you where they're listening from. Okay. When I started painting a landscape painting. I love painting on location, but right now it's the winter time and it's a little cold. But I like to get the furthest first. So I like to put depth in my painting right from the start. And then from that point, I work towards the foreground. That way I establish the spaces between each element. Like this is a these are trees in the background. I'm going to push them further back than they actually are in my photo. And then I'll bring things gradually forward. So I, the sky is pretty simple. Um, these are trees in the background, which I'll establish that and that relationship and the relationship between the trees and the sky. So gradually each one gets built up with a relationship. 
using as my most important um, thing that I want to portray in the painting. So I'll get started on that. And I use these colors. I have a very limited palette here, and I will be using uh, more colors, but I don't want to put too much color in my underpainting. So and do you, do you press real lightly in, at this stage? I, I press very lightly, and I tried, and I don't put too much pastel on um, the underpainting because it could get a little gummy. So uh, try the best you can not to block what you're painting with your hand because it's hard to see okay. it. Yeah, thank you. That could be a mountain too. It could be. It's right now. It's trees, but it could be anything. Yeah. Well, not anything, but. <laughs> and do you typically use uh, something to filter out the pastel dust? Uh, what do you mean filter out? Well, I know some people don't want to breathe pastel dust. I just wondered if that's something you did. I have an, I have an air filter that I usually um, have on in I see. my studio here. And uh -huh. I do. I never, ever blow pastels. Um, that is a big really problem. why um, to blow the dust away. It just the dust will just blow right back into your face <laughs> and breathe it in. So, oh, let's see you do that. I want to watch that happen. <laughs> Uh, I, when the uh, pandemic hit, I did have lots of masks in my studio, so uh, I, sometimes oh. I wear them. It depends upon what I'm doing. That's when one I'm benefit to pastels, being a pastel painter. When I'm doing the pastels, I, um, cleaning them, I wear the mask. But I try not to uh, create too dust. When you say you're cleaning them, what does that mean? I didn't know you had to clean them. Well, they get dirty. They like this. You have to. Oh, just wiping them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wiping them out. That creates a lot of dust. Block my sky in. Pastel's gonna be a little noisy on on sanded paper. Do you have a particular brand of pastel that you like to use? It de it depends upon what I'm doing. Some are softer than others. I have some uh, hard pastels here which I use a lot in the beginning. And then these are Terry Ludwig's that are just wonderful. And I made these two pastels um, from the dust in my studio. Huh. So these are very nice grays. One's a green gray and one's more a uh, neutral gray. So I, I collect the dust and make these wonderful gray pastels. How do you collect the dust? Well, under, underneath my board here, I have um, a little trough, and that all the dust falls in. Oh, okay. And then I collect that dust in a, um, like a, a mortar and pestle, grind it up uh -huh. a bit, and then you add some water because it already has the binder in it, and you can make these wonderful pastels. Oh, nice. So it's a little time consuming, but it's a color, usually the colors, you can't buy those colors. Right, because they're kind of a mixture of grays and things that have fallen together. Yes, and most of my work is a landscape, so my pastels tend to be green, on, unless I'm working on an ocean scene, mm -hmm. then they lean blue. Because here on Long Island, we have, um, I have the sh North Shore, which uh, gives you these wonderful marshland scenes. And then we have the South Shore, which is the Atlantic Ocean. So we have the best of both worlds here, as far as um, water scenes go. So a lot of my work is one of the paintings you showed is a local scene of Marshland, just a local park. 
a state park here on Long Island. I'm getting rid of some of this green here, making this a little bit more neutral. It really changed the look very quickly. Yes, I, almost, I don't want to. Almost feels like a misty dew on top of the grass. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, it, I think it was. My photo here has it. <clears throat> so this had a beautiful reflection of this cloud here. I'm going to make this a little darker, a little too light for me. I don't want it to get confused as a cloud. It's too close in, in a view and value. Everything's about relative uh, comparison, isn't it? Yes, relationships. Uh, so I want to get some more light on this. And my cloud kind of turned into a big lump here, <laughs> which I have to watch out for. So I'll change the shape of this a bit. And I don't, I don't rub pastels. I know a lot of artists do, but I prefer to have the pastel um, crystals, as they call them, lay on top of each other. And once you start, um, rubbing you i think you take away from some of the light that hits the pastel it's the same pigment as oils but there's a binder in it Quite dark down, down. Yeah, we're getting a lot of glare on that cloud. It's really hard for us to tell what's happening there's there. Because oh. pastels usually don't have much glare. Hmm. Well, maybe it's just kind of blowing maybe it out because it's... it's white. The camera is. That's probably little, what's I happening. I have a light there. on top. Maybe that's. A... Yeah, that's okay. Maybe we're fine. Glaring. We'll get through it. Okay. This is a little bit of a discord here. They glow and throw in some. Tone this down, pink here. And I'm going to cut some more in here. This. Now, do you go out and do any touch. any plein air work, or do you uh, strictly yes. you do? Yes, I've been to East End quite a few times. Um, the uh, competition down there. Uh huh. Well, and, that's quite an honor. If you're in Eastern, that's that's a pretty big deal. Uh, yes, that was. I, I think I've been there five times. So, wow, it's a it's an experience. Now I'll build something a little bit closer. Okay. Which is the trees on the left. These are a little bit closer than those. So. Okay. So use one of my nice neutral greens without doing too much detail. I don't want to put a lot of detail in these trees. And typically with uh, pastel, do you start dark to light or does it matter? Yes, it's just like oil painting. You do start dark to light. It's too hard to, once you put some lights down and if you want to make it darker, the pastel can get a little chalky. So you want to avoid that when you're working with pastel. So it's dark to light, just like oil painting is usually dark uh -huh. to light. Okay. 
I'm gonna put some other these Discord colors in here. I love the way the green and the purple play against each other. And they're just beautiful together. About the same value. Yes, yeah. That's I like working with uh, colors that have different temperatures, but the same value. It's it's a uh, tricky, but it it can be very effective. I need a couple little something kind of here, just to break that up a bit. Now I will switch to the other side and work from this edge back. It's got a little stray pines in here and this nice one just sitting out, getting silhouetted. I don't want to make them all the same. Now these go back in almost like a tier, getting closer. These are further away. These are closer to me. So I want to I want to get that feeling. So how do you do that? By putting a little light here, and so I have a dark here, light here, to give that the same thing, to give it depth. And I like to, one of my favorite things to do is I love cutting out the negative shapes where nice you know, I can put in the light you can see through this so it's not so dense in my photo it's pretty dense but I'm using my artistic license to just lighten this up a bit you know I haven't been able to figure out where to get my artistic license I, <laughs> I went to the license bureau they didn't have any I don't know where to get it uh, I, I have to renew mine all the time yeah And I'll use the negative shapes to reshape this also by having the, the blue come down and creep into these trees. The same thing here. Is there anything that you do where, where typically where the trees meet the sky, is there a particular approach you take? Do you want it to be softer? sharper just depends on the scene what how do you deal with that the higher they go up the softer i like it and um because we really our eyes can't focus all the way up there but I, usually i do this with working the negative shape instead of trying to draw a tree that you just come in with this and then it gets that way it's a little bit more abstract so it's not so rendered I'd rather leave a little bit up to the imagination so you don't have to. I don't want to draw. These are all pine trees, so I'm not going to draw all those branches. So I'll put some negative shapes in here. Let's just show you the way where I create the stem of the, the trunk of the tree and then go back in with like drawing some branches that way. And it's more of an abstract approach than, than rendering it. And I want you to be able to see into these trees, not like it's a dense wall. So once I get some different colors on here, so I'm still sticking with uh, what I have over here. This is my color here, one of my nice neutrals.
And I go back and forth with the darks and the lights. This will be pretty dark over here. And I'll put a couple indications of a sort of a gray trunk. So it's nice for sky so. holes. Yeah, I like doing sky holes. <laughs> I've been I playing with oil to... pastels lately on top of my oil paintings, and, and uh, I need to try that for sky holes. Oh. I've never done um, oil pastels. So now I'm going to move down. I think I'll just calm this down a bit. getting some glow. So I do want some glow on here. And this is my discord color here. What, can you explain what you mean by discord color? It's It has to do with the, the um, a complementary color. Right. And in that, um, that wheel I use, they're called discords instead of complementary, where they give you two choices of um, Discord. The, the other one would be, it's uh, I have the blue purple, purple and blue green, and opposite that is a yellow, and a yellow green, with a red as being um, the discord. So it's really a complementary. It's hmm. it's the way that this, um, the man that created this uh, color wheel called it, because they're not quite complementary because there's two of them. So there's two notes of discord. Meaning, you know, it's a it's opposite on the color wheel. And I like this. I want to get a little bit of um, glow where sun would be shining too. This is another, another one of my neutral colors. Where almost the color gets washed out where it's the sun's hitting it. I do I tend to have a light touch when I do pastels. Nice. And I want to get this to be somewhat layered instead of um, the danger when you do grasses like this, marsh grass almost, um, it tends to look like a wall. But I want this to be a layer and a layer and a layer so it Gradually, you can feel the depth of the painting. Right. See how noisy they are? <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, when I first started doing pastels, I went to the Art Students League 
in New York City. And I used to get dirty looks from the oil painters because <laughs> it would be silent except for the scratching of the pastels. <laughs> Who did you study with at Art Students League? Richard Pionk, who was a hmm. um, wonderful teacher. Um, unfortunately, he passed away uh, right a, a, a couple, about two years after I stopped taking classes with him. He had been sick for a while. Hmm. A little too dark here. Now this can be very abstract down here. And one of these wonderful things in my photo here is that this pond here has this glow on it, it has this uh, sparkle. Actually, that's too light to get a little darker. A little reflection here. Now this, this wonderful little glow here that this pond has reflecting some of that sky light up here. And it goes all the way over to here. So I love the way the um, colors, the pastel lays um, on the sanded paper and your eye has to blend it. Where you can, when you can see through the pastel to the color underneath. Oh, it's really pretty. Thank you. Good. So having this limited palette, um, it prevents me from adding some crazy colors. Probably also very convenient for going outdoors. Yes, it is. When I've traveled um, to different places, uh, I usually pack, um, you know, colors that would be for the area. Like upstate New York, you you have to bring every green that you've ever seen <laughs> in the win in the summertime. It's so green yeah. up there. Yeah. And pastels are pretty, you, know, you can do a painting on location in two hours. And they're very forgiving. Pastels are very forgiving. If you make a mistake, you can brush it off. You don't get the um, all the pigment off, but you do get the extra dust so it doesn't mix in with the pastel that you, the new pastel you're putting on. So many, many, uh, you can, um, on this paper, you can put all kinds of layers. I don't know, 25 hmm. layers. I, I've never done 25 layers, but. But you could. You could. <laughs> I would hope you wouldn't have to. Here. A 
is a little too vivid. And there's some, I guess, some uh, algae or something floating on this. And this way, it'll look more like water. You know, I want this to not look like sky. I want it to be a flat surface. So another a very good way of doing this is like you take the edge here and just run it along. So you don't get a straight edge by this. It's just a broken edge. Go back to my edge. So many of my pastels are eh? It's too crooked. My square ones have more down into um, round ones because I use these edges so much. I'll put a little bit out here. Too much, too much. So now I have this, uh, get more of the sky but down here. I'm not even sure I used all my colors up there. So I'm using fewer colors than I had even planned. I think my purple here is a little too vivid. So I'm gonna gray that down. I still it has slight purple look, but it didn't seem to go with the rest of the painting. Get this a little bit more of an edge here. So this is still a, quite a colorful painting, but it is a limited palette. Well, that's one thing I've learned over as I mature as an artist is that uh, you can have a very gray painting that looks very colorful because the you know the, the when things are toned down, it's actually more pleasing. Yes, well, couple couple well, spots uh, of color make it come alive. When I first started with pastels, I wanted every bright color that I could get my hands on. <laughs> and I wanted yeah. to use all of them. But as you mature, you you do appreciate the grays. Yeah, I love bright colors. Oh, I do too. But, I love paintings that are bright colors, but it's um, not my nature. <laughs> yeah. Now a couple more. I have a couple little uh, trees here that I want to put in to give this. I don't want them to meet, but I need to keep this. This is standard. Really, I love those purples much. and those greens. Uh, purple and green together are just such a wonderful combination. It's not something I think of when I'm painting. We have to do a and did you discover that from that analogous color wheel? No, I uh, Richard McKinley. I took a I took a couple workshops with him, and oh, he's he loved so good. The purple and green. Yes, he's very good. So make this a little bit rougher down here. Change it so it's not. I don't want, I have too many horizontals here, so I'm going to just rough this up a little bit. If I was there in person, this cloud would have been gone by the time I finished, so there'd be another cloud to take its place. Of course. You can, you can play around with the clouds. They change so much. A little bit of that 
negative space in this these trees to break them up a bit. That's looking remarkably good compared to what we saw in the beginning. Well, that was the foundation. You know, I, yeah. uh, I like to build a foundation for the painting before I start. And I think I'll add just a little bit more of this discord color in here. I like the green, uh, the way the green and the um, orange play together too. Mm -hmm. It's so important what colors you put next to each other. These complementary colors. It's green, but it's a very dull green and a orangey red. And I think I'll just take this and put a little bit of light. I'm going to try this to see if this works. Kind of reflecting what I have there. If there was some hiddenness. Well, it draws you back, makes you feel like there's another lake yeah. or something back there. Yeah, just a little something back here. That there's something going on. In my original photo, these were on the same line, but I don't want them on the same line. Yeah. I could bring, I could even bring a little bit so that it. So that's further away. I'll just add a little bit more blue to this edge to push this back a little bit. Now, this is a very hard pastel, so. But with the sanded paper, you don't have to worry about getting locked out. What do you mean? That's What's that mean? Uh, if you put too much pastel on, if you use a hard pastel over soft pastel, all it does is scratch it off. So you don't oh. get any of this pastel off, and you wind up taking the pastel that's on the board, you wind up scraping it off. But with the sanded uh, paper, you don't have that problem. But I do tend to work hard pastels to soft pastels. Oh, you do? Yes. Um, most of my uh, underpainting was with uh, hard pastels. Okay. So the, the, the uh, dark purple, this is a new pastel. Um, and this other one is a Caran d'Ache. So I save them for the beginning. And then when you go to put on a Terry Ludwig, there's no problem. But it usually happens with um, a smoother surface. So it's Terry smoother. Ludwig are pretty soft. Oh, yeah. They're wonderful. These are wonderfully soft. Yeah. A little highlight here. You know, I love all the, they have so many wonderful pastels. When when I first started, there was limited paper and limited brands. Some of the brands have disappeared, but now there's um, Blue Earth, which is a new, a new pastel. That's fairly new. It's all a couple of years old. Little well, it's been very important right now that we all support these companies because some of them are little tiny mom and pop companies that, um, survival is critical. Yes. Um, there was a, a, a art store on Long Island that people, um, they didn't have a problem getting customers, but you know, it's a mom and pop, but they couldn't get distributors to give them a lot of supplies because they were so small. 
So that was a local, a local store on Long Island. Well, it's right. It really feels reflection-like in there. Well, I like. To, I love doing water. Uh, lately, I have been into doing those see-through rocks that you pointed out. When uh, I like looking into the water and seeing down into it. So. Yeah, I just am showing one of the ones with the see-through rocks. There's. I'll just show a couple other paintings. Here's the one with the see-through rocks. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's just really beautiful. Yeah, that was fun to do. Well, this is really terrific. Really well, thank beautiful. Thank you, Eric. It was fun. So, are you uh, are you pretty much where you want it to be? Are you you've got a couple more could, minutes if you need a little more time? Um, I could probably fuss with it a little bit more. I'm not that happy with the this cloud up here. And I wanted to do some, like, drift away. Now, instead of using rubbing this or using white, I'm using a pale blue to make a lighter cloud in the sky. Yeah. So that it's, you know, I don't use white over this because it fades right into it. Like, so I have this soft edge here now. Nice. And by using the lighter blue, You can give a little bit more interest to this is solid where it's not it's not another white cloud just like something in the background it gives the sky a little bit more depth a little bit of a sense of mist yes it almost looks purple up here but it, it is blue yeah that's fabulous so when what what are the what are the decisions you're making at the at the point at which you're you're going to say okay I'm close to wrapping it up what are the final little touches you do oftentimes people will save like their bright spots or their whites or um, something like that what what would you typically do I usually take a step back and look at the whole composition like right now I have this arc here <laughs> can you see that Yep Yeah that i would take care of that um i tried to uh fix it before but maybe um it's looking like a mustache to me <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well once you say it now i see it <laughs> yes. once once you see it then you can't unsee it yeah so i'll just yeah I, what i'm seeing is a lip uh, in the beginning of a lower lip yes and usually i find those things after i put them in a frame <laughs> yeah alligators in the sky and <laughs> let me just blend this in a little bit yeah that helps a lot yeah so yeah, yeah well and the That's other thing i, I guess in the end. look in a mirror and just see see what mm -hmm. shapes and things stand out yeah let's bring this cloud down so I'm getting rid of the lips and the mustache. <laughs> That's better. That gives that a little bit more depth too. I, I did a self portrait in a mountain one time. I just, I took a picture of myself oh. <laughs> and, and drew my profile and then made that into the mountain. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it'd be kind of fun to put a little subtle something in there. You wouldn't know it's there unless you know it's there, but once but you see you it, you can't it, get rid of it. <laughs> Can't unsee it. So this is when you get into trouble when you start um, messing around with things. Yeah, you can overdo it. I, I'm sure. I, I sit and look at the painting for a while and um, make judgments after, you know, after I walk away from it and come back. Sure, yeah. But I find that sometimes uh, somebody comes into my studio at night and they make it much better. They paint and <laughs> the gremlins come in and uh, they finish my painting. How nice of them. And I, and I get up and say, wow, it's all done. <laughs> I don't remember doing it. 
Well, there's a there's a lot of value in time and perspective. Yes. I love to I, I love to just put them away for a couple of months and come back to them, see them with I fresh eyes. I don't put them away for a couple of months. I put them away for days, or I I play a trick with myself. I put them on my easel, and when I walk into my studio, I keep my eyes closed and put the light on it and open it up so that the first thing I see. And oh, fun. you see a lot. You're you're looking at it with fresh eyes. And yeah. nothing else interferes. So you see things that you didn't see before. Well, that is just lovely. Jane, why don't you come back on camera real quickly before we say okay. goodbye? Thumbs up and applause. What a beautiful oh, job you've you. done. Thank you. Fabulous. Well, that was oh, well was worth fun. all the effort. <laughs> Okay. Yes, it was a was a bit of an effort. Yeah, we Jane and I had a little secret, and that is that we had to spend a lot of time working on tech to to get it going. But we got it, and she came up with the idea that worked. I had no idea. Uh, here is Jane's website, Jane McCraw Tubner T E U B N E R dot com. What will they find there? Well, I have uh, most of my paintings are are on the website. And I have some galleries listed, and um, I hope they enjoy the website. Why don't do you tell have, people? Um, oh, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. Tell people quickly about the Pastel Society because you're wearing an apron. Yes, that's Pastel Society of America. They were fabulous uh, founded, organization. They were founded in the 1970s when pastel was not a very well respected medium, and they've built the. Um, they have helped build the respect that pastel is getting and more and more shows are getting more pastel paintings in them so it's it's yeah. a great society it's a beautiful thing and, and a very good organization they do a great event every two years in albuquerque right yes well no yeah. that's the that's international pastel society of america uh oh i'm sorry pastel that is um the umbrella organization and the Pastel Society is one of the organizations. I'm oh, I'm so I'm so, I'm sorry, I confused that. Yes. Okay, yeah, but you all get to, you, all, you all kind of get together there. Yes, all the Pastel Societies. The last time I went to the convention, there were people from China, Australia, Europe. It's it's a worldwide event. So yeah, kind of like this. Fun. We got people watching from all over the world today. So fabulous. It's a well, small world now. Thank you. It is a small world. We're all one big art family, and now everybody's looking to you. Uh, you've done a beautiful job on on pastel and teaching us and inspired us. And if, if I could paint like you, I might oh. pick up pastels. Well, I think it's an easier medium than oil pastels. Yeah, I, I don't know enough about it to, to know yet. <laughs> I don't have I any experience. I started in oils, and then once I got to pastels, I never looked back. No. Huh? All right. So. Well, Jane, thank you so much for being on today. We really loved having you as our guest. Everybody visit her website and uh, well, we'll have you. you back someday.